Now, there's so many changes we so need, many. you know, it's hard to point out which ones. Um, mainly, we need more help for the young ones. Uh, we need more people to tell the truth in government. I think most people these days are sort of, um, how can I put that word? Despondent, Despondent with, country, with it all. Well, I'd like to see some investment in the north because we seem to be getting left behind everybody else. Locally around here, it's probably the same story for kind of any um, more working class town that just has seen a kind of drop off in any jobs. And um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you, you only need to walk around here and see the, the number of shops closing down, struggling to operate. And I know that's probably a picture across the country. So I think I think a lot of people, regardless of where they are in the country, are suffering from from or struggling with the same things. It's, it's cost of living's risen massively um, and wages haven't haven't kept up. It's just money put back into society. People don't want much. They, they just want a, a, a decent, civilised standard of life. Simple as that. Let's just not ask them too much. Uh, where do I start? Uh, I'd like to see more opportunities for the youngsters. I'd like an increase in the pension, pension rate. I think they're on a very, very low income. Uh, I'd, I'd like, like to see less money going abroad and more and more enterprise into the country, such as uh, apprenticeships for the young ones. I'd like the, uh, the abol abolishment of university fees, as in Scotland and Wales, they don't pay it. This would give more opportunities to the less privileged to be able to go to university. Uh, better, a better transport, definitely. Uh, good, I mean, the, the fares have been lowered in the area, but the service is not so clever. Cost of living is very dear, all that just needs to be changed, electricity and gas to come down. If you can see the state of the precinct, there's no investment in shops, shops are just dying. There's only one or two handfuls of shops on the precinct now and they'll just go eventually, mm. like everything else. I'd like to see more support for small businesses, especially in the hospitality sector, because like a lot of people's favourite cafes, restaurants, ones that have been successful for 5, 10, 15 years, seem like they're closing overnight. Um, and then, yeah, I guess an locally an injection of jobs somehow that would allow people to kind of have, have a greater sense of hope and social mobility, because it feels like around here a, a lot of people feel trapped. Um, I think he's out of touch completely. He's a multi-billionaire pretending to care. Uh, well, R Rishi Sunak, very nice man, but he, he's totally out of touch. He comes from Millionaire's Row. What does he know about the likes of you and me? I mean, he showed when he went on the D-Day landings and he left halfway through. That's disrespectful. You know, perhaps if his relatives had died or whatever had happened during the war, he may have thought about it a different way. And he also thinks that he's not very discreet. Well, is that, is it 14 years to do something and nothing's happened? And uh, to be honest, I can't see Labour doing anything different. Maybe as a person, he's all right, you know, but running the government, um, you've got to look at what mess it's in. OK, they've had trouble with COVID and they've had other issues. Um, but they've had quite a long time in government, you know, and things should have changed by now. And unfortunately, to me, personally, I can just see the change has gone down. You know? I think he's, I mean, I think he's awful. Um, and I think both both personally and politically, uh, there's very little he's said in the last year or so that, that uh, would change my mind on that. Um, well, there again. Uh, I don't know much about him, as, you know, I don't follow politics that much, but as I said before, I don't trust anyone personally, and I think that's what's happening with Labour and uh, Conservatives. I think Labour's got in now because of uh, how Conservatives run the country, but watch his space, you know, what he says, I hope he does, but uh, you know, what hold my breath on that one. There's nothing to judge him by. I mean, there has been some good Labour leaders in the past, but whether he'd be one of them, I think he was a solicitor on account or something. He, he was in some profession. He, he, he seems uh, plausible enough, but there again, they all do. He's probably not going to tick all my boxes. I think he's been worryingly passive on the Israel-Palestine issue, but I think that he knows what he's doing. He knows that if he basically remains passive on most things, the Tory party is self-destructing in front of us. So if he can 
avoid as many difficult interviews and conversations as possible, I think the election will essentially win itself for him. And he probably knows that. And we'll get a better picture of who he is as a person and a politician um, when he's in power, if he gets to power. I think it's a flip-flop. He decides one week he wants to vote one thing and he wants to vote one thing, another, another thing, completely opposite. I honestly don't trust him. And I know he's head of the polls. And if he gets in, I think, God help us. And that's the truth. I really do believe that.